Hey guys, welcome to Smack Talk episode 7. We're talking about uh, five time New Zealand uh, stock car champion Peter Reese, the man, the mongrel, the legend that he is. Um, we shot out to his uh, shed and, like I said, we did an interview with him. Um, you all know Pete from Saturday Night Racing, he's an absolute mongrel. Loves being on the track, loves helping out people. Um, he builds stock cars for a living and um, it was a real honour to be out there and interview Pete. Uh, we tried something a bit different. We uh, did time lapse of Pete's cars, or car being stick it up, um, and that will be shown in the interview. Um, we really hope you like it, and another legend ticked off Smack Talk's list. Oh, and the earthquake too, <laughs> and Pete's dog snoring. <laughs> All right, so we're here with Peter Rees. Um, cheers for speaking with Smack Talk, Pete. Um, so, can you just explain to the people who don't actually know how you got into Speedway? I rode motocross in a Britain league three times one year and I wanted a sport that was less strenuous on my bones. So I went to go to soccer. And how many years ago is that now? 16, 17. 17 full seasons of Speedway. I don't know, 97, 98. That's not a bad effort that. So after, say, 16, 17 seasons, how do you keep motivated to rock up to the track every... I mean, Palmy has so many meetings a year. How do, how do you get yourself to the track every week? Well, as a guess, I just enjoy it. Simple as that. And build my own stuff and try different stuff. The new car every year gets me money. Yeah, because three years ago you told myself that you were thinking about getting out of stock cars. That's about when you started building tanks. And that sort of, you know, yeah, lightened it up a bit for you. What made you build oh, a tank? Yeah, that kept me interested, building tanks. But what made you build that first tank there? to keep me interested really, just something different. And I would like everyone that races speedway to um, treat white tanks and most people, most drivers want to own one, so I just want to do my own one. With, you obviously run a full time business now and how many, how many years have you been in business now? It'll be a few now. It's eight or ten. I think it's probably ten. And you've, you've cracked over the 100 chassis last season with your super stock tank. Ask me a question and then nobody knows the answer. <laughs> you carry on. <laughs> um, you cracked over 100 chassis last year, being your um, 10p super stock tank. Yeah. Um, and you've got 24 going out this, uh, sorry, 25 going out this season. You've obviously been pretty busy. Did you ever think it would get to this when you decided oh, to no. open up? Even last year we did 10 or 12. And uh, well, it's for, there's three of us here. We're kind of taking on too much this year, but I'll never say no. So we've just worked harder, and it looks like we're going to get it done. We've got two months to go. I don't think we're going to upset too many people. But, but you know, I never expected this to be as big as it's got. So with 25 cars, 13 of those are tanks. What, like you said before, everyone wants to own a tank. You've obviously made them a lot more affordable than others in the past, and more reliable and easy to work on. Is that quite cool for you to? You know, what, how does it feel for you to see how many cars just go out like that? Uh, yeah, well, I enjoy it obviously, but then it's good for the sport, so that makes me happy. <laughs> and a lot of these guys that have got these tanks realise that they're softer on you because it, it, it's quite a mean sport, and until you've done it, you don't know. But it, it does hurt. And these things just absorb a bit that much more, so I think they're going to keep a few guys going a bit longer in the sport. Um, when, whenever you have a speech, um, when you've won many of your trophies and whatnot, you always thank Hartley Race Engines. What sets them apart from the rest? Like, what makes them so good that you go back to them year in, year out? Well, those engines go good to start with, but it's the service you use and the backup, and he is local, so it's easy for me, but. You know, he's got 70, 80 engines out there, but he looks after everyone and as much as he looks after mine. And then we've been for years with our grief, but their grief's fixed and I don't miss meetings, I don't miss many races because of it. I mean, and he's always at meetings as much as he can. He's always socialising, I mean, it's just, it's just simple for me. And why go overseas for the engine built? Why go to another town of home that just promises your stuff and doesn't do it, you know? It's simple. Do you um, have a favourite track? Uh, has to say my home track, Palmy, but second would be one near Rotorua. A bogey track? 
You got one of those? No. Um, now, I, in Jan on January, I think it was 6th and 7th, um, you had New Zealand Stock Car Champs at Woodford Glen and Christchurch. Um, you qualified easily, um, and then you came to the final three heats. And in the first race, I think you were off four or... First race off the bat. Oh, no, was it? No, you weren't. I can't you were off the front near the front and you got spun at uh, turn three. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I actually got a photo of you being spun and my heart sunk. <laughs> <laughs> but um, do you, like, you came back and won 1 NZ and I remember your eyes when after that third heat and you couldn't believe it. There was a lot of carnage, but how do you come from being spun out in the first heat, first lap, to winning 1 NZ? Uh. There's luck obviously, but I think I won the next race and the one after. I guess you just chuck on. I mean, that was, your, that was first team. And, and you just never know what's going to happen to the other 29 cars here. The, the carnage towards the end and the attrition rate was just high enough to get me right there. And I, I thought my best grid was off two, I think. I oh, know it was, it was off three for the last heat, so I had to win it. Couldn't go any further than one. I think uh, you sort of and, thought. And then the young guys, they had a bit of a form and cross it to and touch me. Hence. I remember when you finished, you thought you got two NZ. Well, because Damien was so far ahead, see, and he still finished. But uh, those boys sort of me out and then the cross it was actually helped me in the end, which was kind of surprising, but good, good guys. That was quite a big trip for you. You did a lot of races and a lot of miles. Racing three different tracks. Yeah, you should see my bank dogs. Did you enjoy, you enjoy Greymouth? Oh yeah. Yeah, well, I've never been there before, ever. Not, not to race or not even be there. And, and that's the sort of place that's been on the news for all for the wrong reasons. And you hear about it and, you know, I've been there now. Done. Been over Arthur's Pass. People want to talk to me about that too. So you're happy that you, um, you drove your tank at Nelson and not your space frame as um, certain other people told you you should? Yeah, well, I made up my mind last year. I kept my space frame, but I made up my mind I'm, I want to make a super stock tank go good. And I think it actually went all right. I mean, it could be better, but that was a nice car to drive. I, I didn't get here. I did 30 plus meetings in both of my cars last year. The maintenance free sort of thing. The, yeah, I was just here in the tank whether it went good or not. That's good to see you gave that person a good old bumper in Nelson. <laughs> Um, so, last the year just the season just gone. Um, Asher was full time superstop from the start to the end, and um, he raced in the Mustangs at the Superstop Teams Champs in February. Um, he actually did exceptionally well. He ended up winning the Spike Richardson Trophy. Um, as a father, and just seeing how he's come up, how, how did that feel? Like obviously, just to have him there must have been cool. But to have that a trophy that you've won yourself before. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Went to the right person, I thought. Yeah. There's a lot of young guys coming up through the ranks mm. in Palmy and Superstock teams. Oh, he just had one of those races against the Busters that, that went everything his way. Put him up, and uh, so that's why he got the trophy, I believe. So you got both your boys in stock cars this year, and potentially Superstocks yet to be... Yeah, Ethan seen. started his, his new cars ready for painting. And his Superstock... That'll be kind of after Christmas or late February. But we want to, I want to do a full season, two cars each. And it's not going to happen this year, but it will happen next season. <laughs> nice little earthquake there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've got the New Zealand Stock Car Champs in um, Palmerston this year. Um, who do you think will... Go to the, like obviously it's going to be pretty tough because there's going to be a lot of cars there. Who do you think is probably a favourite without seeing the cars for the season? Obviously, judging by last year's performance, who do you think is the one to watch? Oh, that's a question. That's a dumb question. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be like the lottery, really. Uh, Two hundred plus cars. Who knows who ever wins that? So a very lucky person coming out the end on top of that one. So, there's a lot of people out there building um, 
speedway chassis and all different shapes, sizes, weight limits, well, weight, sorry, all sorts of different things. What makes a Rees chassis so good? I don't know. I suppose they're affordable. They're built to what the customer wants. They're built around the customer, they're built around the engine. Uh, they're just simple, and a lot of people don't like them because they are simple. But simple's best, most people tell you that simple works. You've got to be able to fix a car between a race, and, and there's probably 20 or 25 minutes between each race. So if you can't fix it, why take it there? So who who do you ha who is your most respective rival? I mean, you've had some pretty good rivalries with Brendan Locke, Kerry Roberts, uh, sorry, Kevin Roberts, Kerry Humphreys in stock cars, and then moved on into super stocks. Who was your favourite person to hit? Uh, let's say Roberts was fun at the start, but become boring because it was, wasn't a challenge. Um, Oh, they're all just, uh, at the end of the day, if you look back at all the history, they started it and I just finished it. I mean, I've not been cocky, I mean, I just enjoy it. I actually enjoy some of the started. I, I got a couple of new ones this year that made it quite clear last year, and I'm, I'm just probably a bit picky like that. I'll go and finish it. Um, <clears throat> you've had two trips to the UK. Um, one was because you won 2NZ behind Simon Joblin and he didn't want to go because he'd been the year before and then the second one because you won to World 240s. Um, it, the second trip didn't end the best, can you tell us about that? Oh, I was alright, I, I got knocked out. Simple as that. It was, a, it was a funny because it was a big long knock out but after a night in the hospital because that's compulsory in England, concussion spent 24 hours in the hospital, I got out and you know in your mind if you're right or not, and the, the little knock that I had in Wellington, that actually knocked me around for a couple of weeks. But the one in England, I flew home the next day, was fine. And uh, that was just excellent shit happened. How did you find driving on tarmac? How did, did oh, it's you hard work, but it's good skills, very good skills. Yeah, I take my head off to those guys that race tarmac. You know, it's the yeah, super, super, super car guys. They've got to have good skills all the time, not just half the track, every lap, lap after lap. Um, now for me, personally, the race against Rotorua, it was the last year in your space frame before you came to a super stock tank. Um, the race against Rotorua, um, you actually, you guys needed to, I think it was a semi-final, and you started off blocking, and so did Scott Myers. About two laps in, you just all of a sudden decided to run. What, what, oh, I mean, I you guys don't have communication, so how, what made you realise you needed to run? No, but we do have communication. Aren't not not communication. <laughs> no, but I, I, I wear a red light, and that gives us time to have a breath, because the start's quite busy. Um, wear a red light and look around. Pete was upside down, I believe, Pete Benston. And that's what the red light was for. Shane had front, front end damage. Scott... Well, Scott shouldn't have even been here, did you, I don't think. But anyway, it's another story. <laughs> and so it was basically go. I wasn't, I wasn't, I was still on the lead lap. I wasn't the leader. So just go, and it turned out, it worked out. Um, this year, you've, well, you've always had Supreme Panel Glass and Paint doing your chassis, and you can see your 1NZ stock car here, all painted up nice. Um, you've got Jake Baker from Hearts doing all your bodies, and bonnets, etc. And then we've got Sign Fusion doing all your sign writing. Um, things are, in sign writing have come a long way. You've obviously got one tank going silver and one tank going red. What's the story behind that? Uh, Brent Body's come back on board actually and he wants to tag his name on the super stop. Right, as a complete name super stop. And Sound Auto is going to story of this one. Um, so, and he wanted to change of colour instead of traditional, which is fair enough, so I've just left it up to them. And they've come up with a design, and we haven't quite seen it, set so it is now. It looks a lot on paper. So, you know, it's hard to make a tank look good, I reckon. That, that to me, has always looked like a tank. But uh, you never know. They might come up with something pretty cool. Cool.
Um, the 2013-2014 season is about two months away. Um, you're looking in pretty good shape. Will all five cars be there to start with? Open night. Yeah, opening night, sorry. Uh, uh, chassis are well and truly ahead of time, and I don't know why, but I kind of got a boost, boost of you know, being real keen this year, so I've worked some late hours and got my stuff done, and Ashes got his finished and he thinks it's done. Uh, Brian's working like you wouldn't believe as well. It's really it's just for a lot of reasons. I, I know we'll have at least one carriage, um, but I'm hoping we'll have five of them. So what, what do you hope to achieve from this season? Do you set goals or do you just play it by year and see take what uh, comes? I used to set goals, but it doesn't really worry me now. It just takes it comes. At least go race. It's, it's fun. I've got nothing to prove on that class at all. So I might have to go back to the old days, been a bit mongrel. I mean, I've got two cars this year. I'll keep the other one, keep two, the other super. If I wreck that one, I'll get the other one. So you're arguably the greatest stock car driver in history. No one's come close. You've won five New Zealand titles. No one's won two. Um, what, what do people need to do to catch up? Well, uh, like, yeah. Get a package like that. <laughs> I have one other thing. I can answer that question. I don't know. They just go out there and do it. Don't. I don't know. Don't put pressure on yourself. I go out there and have fun. If I uh, don't qualify for something that doesn't actually, I don't beat myself up for it. And there's always other racing. Well, normally, always other racing you can go do. And racing's fun. Now you won three and Z in at Tumura Speedway. You won it in your space frame, your last stock car space frame. Then you built your three and Z tank, which you won one and Z in Wanganui, in the Dave Evans type colours. You haven't raced a stock car tank without a one, two, or three on it. Will you hang around long enough to do that? Uh, funny you say that because my original number is eleven, and but like, Palmer's going to be a big ass, you know. I'd I don't expect to come out the early in the party without putting number 11 back on that car. But Nelson won the World Conference this year. Nelson won the hosting rights for the Stocker Champs next season. And I like that, and I like being hosted down there. So I'm going to do another whole year. You've had some interesting things happen to you in the stock car down in Nelson. You, um, I can't remember what year it was, but it was you had to sit out the North Island Super Stock Champs. I think it was because you got knocked out in, the, in teams racing. And so therefore you went down to Nelson and you raced as um, 10 in in the super stock. What did you do in your stock car after the meeting? Well, it was the last event of the meeting. Do you remember what you did? You were asked to be a push car. Oh, that's right. Mm, Derby, ramp Derby race. Yeah, and they, they do it. Oh, I don't know, so they do it well, but it's um, sucked me onto a Honda that wasn't hitting nothing and I chased them around and went over the ramp. I think it more fun than needed actually. <laughs> there was two ramps, wasn't there? Yeah, there was. And you didn't know there was two? Smoked them. Oh no, yeah, down that back straight. Yeah, it was a bit of fun. They, they look after down Nelson. So it's a, it's, a, it's a bit of a trip, but it's, a, it's worth going. So I want to hang in there for, in that class, for uh, one more year so we can race in Nelson. Cool, thank you. That's right. Okay, so this season, Reeves Race Cars are doing a little bit of merchandise. Um, we're going to have hats, drink bottles, stickers, posters, some cool flags, and um, there will always be t-shirts and all that sort of thing as well. Um, 
Thanks to Smack Talk for coming out to Rees Race Cars today. And uh, we're going to give away um, a drink bottle, a flat peak hat. It's got the Rees Race Cars logo embroidered onto it, so it'll last real well. A sticker, a poster, and a flag for your season coming up. Um, these can all be located, if you want to buy them, on uh, facebook.com forward slash Rees Race Cars. And uh, you can get your well, merchandise before the season starts. It'd be great for kids. We're going to have kids size hats and everything. So, Flick us a message, come like Rees Race Cars, follow us on Facebook, and um, yeah, cheers for Pete for doing this for Smack Talk. Thank you, Peter. Mm. Alright, question time. How many chassis has Rees Race Cars built end of last season? Private message your answers to Smack Talk. Uh, you can find out your answers for that uh, also on the Reads and Race Cars website. Go check out at the bottom of the screen. Big effort there for Pete. It was awesome going out to his shed and talking to him. He's a great guy. Um, he's always a character and his interview skills have come a long way since he first started racing. Um, if you want to talk to him, just go talk to him in the pits. He'll sign anything for you. He's a great guy. Um, just can't say more about him. Don't forget to pop along to his open day. Everyone is welcome at his shed and house. 28th of September. Um, if you have a car and you haven't got a green shed and it's ready, take it out. There'll be green shedding available. There'll be merchandise out there available and food. So pop out, have a look at cars. We're hoping to have 10 to 15 tanks there. So go say hi. More the merrier. Okay. Um, just on a side note, huge thanks. Uh, sorry, huge congratulations to Tom Harris who won the world final in England uh, a couple of nights ago. Awesome effort for Tom. Great to see him up on top step. Um, that makes him national points champion, gold cup champion, and world champion. Um, and that's just awesome for him and his family. Um, wrap up now. Thank you to Peter Rees for having us out there. It was really awesome and um, we had a great time. Um, Carl from Sign Fusion, coming a long way in sign writing. Best in the business. Huge thanks to him for helping us out with the time lapse. Really accommodating. He did a great, great job. So go check him out on Facebook. If you haven't, if your car hasn't stick it up yet, go see him. He'll do a mean, mean deal. Um, cheers, Huggies, for wearing your nice pink shorts. Take the focus off, Pete. That was great. Um, Colin Cassidy and uh, Paul Tully for the photos from England, from when Pete travelled to England. They were awesome to have, and we really appreciate that. Uh, Paul Kirk and Jeremy Saville, thanks to you guys as well. Um, the whole Smack Talk crew, Demon, big man, good stuff, Demon. Um, thanks to KJ, big effort, and uh, I'll see you on the 12th. Be at Palming Open Night, don't miss it. Get amongst it. That's right.